Hey, good morning, everybody. How you guys feeling? So good to see you. Welcome to Vu Basel. It's an exciting week. Um, we're glad that you're here. You are here for the first session of this three-day experience we're about to have. Um, if you don't know uh, where you are or what's happening right now, I see a lot of familiar faces and people that are part of our team. Uh, this space right here, we're calling it Vu Basel. It's a three-day experience, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it's put on by Vu Church, um, which is a local church here in the city of Miami. Actually, uh, two weeks ago or so, there was a church service happening here, and uh, we loaded out and we flipped the space uh, because we wanted to be part of Art Basel and all that's happening in our city this week. And so we're so excited uh, for what's going to happen over the next three days, and we're glad that you're here. Really what we're going to be doing, uh, we have kind of an open gallery space that people are going to be coming through throughout the three days, but three times a day, we're going to take a moment to stop and have what we're calling divine discussions. So this space, uh, if you've walked around and gotten to read a little bit, it has a theme attached to it, and the theme is divine design. Divine design, and that's really what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, So a couple times a day, we're going to stop and have a conversation around a theme with a group of guests, and we have some uh, amazing panelists and people coming through over the three days, and today's special because we're kicking it off really with our team, the team that put this space together, and so what we're going to do is give you a bit of a behind-the-scenes look and some insight into what this space is about, what the theme means, and how all of this came together. Uh, we've got some awesome panelists. We have our pastor, Pastor Rich, is going to be part of our panel today. We have Oliver Mariquin. Uh, he's our programming director. He's going to be part of our combo. We have Carrie Acevedo is our creative director. We have Jerry Del Vento, who's hiding back there. And the conversation is going to, we have Tiago Magro. I almost forgot him because I can't see him. He's somewhere. There he is. And uh, today, Manushka Charles is going to be kind of running this conversation. She's in charge. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. And so we asked, uh, this space already feels very settled and calm and quiet, which is good. We, uh, the conversation will probably go about an hour. We'll see if it feels great. We'll go longer. If uh, it's fizzling out, we'll, we'll cut it off, you know? Um, but no, about an hour in here. So if you can stay, we would love for you to stay. We may have people coming in, um, but we're just grateful that you're here. And um, we're excited to get to share a, a bit of what divine design means to us. And uh, hopefully over the course of today, and if you get to be here over the next few days, you'll get to consider what design design means, uh, divine design means to you. And so can you just welcome our panelists as they come up? Give them a round of applause. Come on, who's excited to be here? I think it's it's so cool that we get to be in the heart of the design district during Art Basel, just having conversations. And this is what this is all about. We're going to talk about this space. Some of you have been able to walk through it and see some of the elements and some of the installations of the space. And, and really, today is an opportunity for us to dive in and to really look at a few of the people who put this together. And they represent so many people. There's so many people uh, who put this on, who were a part of really making this space happen. And so this conversation is really just behind the scenes, going behind the curtains to hear a little bit about it. And so I'm grateful to have Tiago and Kati and Jerry and Pastor Rich and Oliver. Can we give it up one more time for our incredible panelists excited for this conversation? We're just going to have some fun if that's okay with you guys. You know, come on, let's get it. Uh, I was thinking about this this concept of divine design and um, just how things come together. I think it's so beautiful to see how this space has come together, but in actuality, it just didn't happen. It just it didn't just appear out of nowhere. And I think about I have some friends who don't believe in God, and you know you could belong before you believe. You know whatever you believe, it's fine, but. What, what I have this understanding is when I look at just the human mind and when I look at how we are created and designed, I'm like, there has to be a creator. Some of the, the things that we love, food, art, music, they all have some kind of creator. And that leads me to believe that 
We have a creator. There's somebody who has divinely designed us together. And so I love this theme. I love this concept. And, and this happened because they're collaborators, people who got together, people who uh, have different jobs, people who are in different spaces, got together to collaborate, to create this space. And just to open up the conversation, Pastor Rich, can you tell us a little bit about this theme, divine design? Where did it come from? What does Absolutely. it mean? Absolutely. I think Manu is the new Oprah, by the way. Um, this is, uh, we were just upstairs talking before. She's like, I've been watching Oprah interviews. I'm ready. I'm like, let's go. Come in prepared. Um, so you're already smashing it. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. This is like, um, it's really beautiful when you have a vision or a dream of something and then start to see it come to fruition. Last night, we had a, a wonderful kickoff dinner with all these people. We all set up way too late on the first night of Basel and hasn't even started yet, but then some other friends that were in town. And so it's really cool that you're here for this first session. Not only are you here, but also uh, we're, we're streaming this 24 hours a day for the next three days. Uh, all of this content is going to be repackaged and reused to keep the message and the story going. So uh, these small conversations with just a hundred of us inside the room is really cool and intimate, but I, I'm believing that what's discussed here is going to continue to have ripple effects uh, for years and years to come. And I think that you're asking like right off the, the get-go, like how this all came about. And I, I wish that all of us up here on the stage could take credit for it, but uh, that would be a complete lie. Uh, a good friend of mine who we just lost this past Sunday and who we are really giving this entire space a tribute to was not the plan last week, but it's become the plan this week, is uh, Virgil Abloh, who is the art director for Louis Vuitton, as well as the founder of Off-White, and just really one of the most special people I've ever met in my entire life. But in July of this summer, he reached out to me in his way that he does, which he's the text king. He, doesn't, he didn't really like talking on the phone as much as he loved just, we would like solve, I felt like worldwide problems all through text. I'm like, oh yeah, you know? And um, he said, bro, I got an idea for Basil, like, He's like, did you ever get that space that you guys were working on last year? I'm like, yeah. He's like, let's let's do a thing. Let's let's call it Divine Design, and uh, let's. He wanted it. We were going to end on Friday night with a with a lecture or a conversation. The two of us. He used the word lecture. I've never used that before, but he's also taught at Harvard, and I never have. Um, so I feel like once you hit that level, you start calling these things lectures. For us, it's like let's have a talk. Um, but um, it was going to be a really cool moment where we were going to talk about faith and art. And that was the beginning. And from the very beginning, we just started talking last July and uh, I hit up Cotty with it and we just started to kind of create this idea and we just started working, I felt like every week, I'm sure we'll have some stories around some of that, but divine design is just this idea of really heaven and earth colliding and meeting that I think in all of us, every one of us in this space, uh, we're all creatives. Like, like we were created by the creator <laughs> and um, we all have this gift to give back to God. And so I think in creativity, even though our humanity is broken and even though we have issues and flaws and we're full of mistakes and I, I, I'm speaking about myself, not you, but we fall short. But what's so beautiful is that we see these traces and we see these moments of God in the work that we do. And uh, one of Virgil's big, things was I was like, you know, next door is like Louis. It's, it's really divine because he's not here with us physically, but no doubt he is here with us spiritually and his presence is felt. Next door is the Louis Vuitton art installation. And so his art is next door as well as this wall. Like he has this whole entire block. It is supernatural to say the least. It's sovereign and it's providential. But I remember we were working on it. I was like, Virgil, I was like, I, we don't really, like, we're just a bunch of kids. Like, we got splatter paint. And he's like, no, no, no. <laughs> he was like, I want the space to inspire 17-year-old kids that walk in that go, I could do this too. And so there was even an element to him that he wanted it to be just raw and all of it's a deconstruction. And you'll see that over everything. But like, it's this raw space of just going, hey, Everyone is a creative and everyone can see traces of divinity show up in their creativity. And that really is what we're, we're doing here this week. And that's really the kickoff of all of it. 
I so. love that. Because it's a reminder to us that creativity is not out of reach. Because yeah. it's easy to walk into a space like this and see the merch and see the different creatives and think, I can never do that. But I think one of the things that we want to convey is you actually can do that. Yeah. Because you were designed by the great designer, he's put all that creativity on the inside of you. And this space has come together with people putting aside their pride, putting aside their egos, putting aside even them thinking, well, I don't think I have enough to give us putting that aside to say I actually can collaborate that the areas that I'm weak in there's somebody else that's strong there's things that I might not see that other people see and we all have creativity on the inside of us it's within reach and we can see that when we look around this room and how this whole entire thing has come together and so how did this space come together how did the ideas come together what was the process of creating you gotta this ask space Cadi Acevedo Big question. Um, honestly, it all started, Pastor Rich, he's speaking about texting. He texted me, I don't. I guess July, I don't remember the timeline, but it was like super encrypted, like we're gonna do something big for Basil. And I'm like, okay, cool. And so- um, That's like, all you give too, you know? It's like, well, yeah, for sure, I'm in, you know? Totally. Are you in? Life or death, I think, you know? Um, that's how we text. Literally. And so um, as we're talking, we're a big, on collaboration, like our teams work really closely together. So I took a screenshot of it and I sent it to Oliver. I'm like, Oliver, get ready, because in December we have to we have to put on Basil. But then I didn't hear about it for like another two weeks. And then um, you call me randomly on, I don't know, a weekday. And then he starts telling me, hey, Virgil wants to do this whole thing. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> and so, um, that weekend, we worked together. He's like, hey, I want to put a deck together for Virgil. Send it over. And I'm sitting there like, it's Friday, Saturday. How do I put a deck together to show Virgil? Like, <laughs> like he's one of no like, pressure. my... No yeah, like, pressure. Psalms heroes. 23. I don't know. Sorry. These are Literally. dumb Bible jokes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Literally. A lot of pressure. But I was like, I'm just... I had to tell myself in that moment, you just got to just go and do your best. That's all I can do, right? That's all any of us can do. And so we put the deck together, sent it to Pastor Rich. Pastor Rich does whatever, I guess, sent it to Virgil. And then a, a week after, we meet with our team. And that essentially became the kickoff of this um, expression, um, presenting that deck to our team and then just chatting over. And then from there, we decided we would meet weekly, um, every Thursday at like 11 or something. And then we would have iterations of a deck. And so the deck started out blue because I really wanted blue, but Virgil wanted yellow. <laughs> the deck turned yellow. And then it was just iterations of program and furniture and art and all of these people just coming together, pitching ideas, references, testing different things. Um, and that's kind of been the process on a macro level, then coming into the space, preparing, giving ourselves a runway to build this out because we're a church, so we had to load out of here and then load back in and, and turn this into this beautiful space. But pretty much that was the way we kind of jumped into it. And we all have our stories of how that happened, um, but that that's how we got here. I love it. Well, maybe Oliver, what was your favorite part of the process as our production yeah. programming director? Which is like the easiest job, by the way, at no. our church. Yeah, no. totally. Easiest. No stress work. at all. So rarely easy. works. Yeah, yeah. Rarely works. Gets a, a lot of sleep at night. She yeah. get asked to speak on panels and, uh, yeah. you know. No, um, Thank you, Manu. And really, this whole thing couldn't be possible, like Gadi and Pastor Rich is saying, without the incredible team. I want to shout out all these guys behind the cameras, these guys at front of house, smallest front of house ever. Our people manning our merch table. We had an awesome line here, the nicest people, really just helping facilitate the space now. But the funnest part, really, was the ideation process. And especially when you don't know anything, there's no boundaries. It's like, do we have a big budget? Do we have a small budget? Do we want to paint outside? We have no we budget, yeah, Oliver. Like, what kind of a operate question that is way? that? Yeah, yeah. There's Always no budget. What's the free Five route? loaves and two fish. Yes, Multiply, yes. bro. Yes, yes. We serve the God of the miraculous. Of, the, of miracles. What budget? I don't Come read on. that in what the Bible. What is budget? Yeah. And so... 
yeah, no boundaries on that sense, but also limiting because you're like, what are we going to do? And like God was saying, it is relatively cryptic. And because we were partnering with Virgil, we were like, how much do we want to tell our team? How much do we want to tell the public? Um, and so we're having some people on our team create renders of this space. And we're like, kind of just move this here, do that there, make this 11 feet. How would this fit or not? And so this actual room, I wish we could have kind of shown it um, even now on a screen or something, was designed on a whole 3D format. Well, first 2D, then 3D, and then 3D probably 36 times over. And so like God was saying in each of our meetings, we didn't have an agenda. It was like, what are we going to do in this meeting? It's like, let's just look at the deck again. Let's just update the deck. What do we think now? What do we think now? And being in those spaces, hearing from Tiago came down from Atlanta. He's like, yeah, I'm about it. Let's go. I'm sure we're going to hear about that in a second. Jerry popping in. God, he's input. We had so many people on our team that were like, Basil's sick. We got to come out strong. This is what we should do. And we were like, that's crazy, but I love it. That's also crazy. Let's do it. And so the iterations of the outside, the iterations of the inside, it was incredible, but it was all through conversation. And it was all through like, what do you think? And so it was really a team effort. And so as we were putting things together, as we were putting even the furniture piece together, every detail was accounted for. And so like these statements, even on the wall, they're helping put language to what you're seeing. Like yellow, why did we choose yellow? Yeah, it was one of Virgil's favorites, a hundred. But there's also some really inspiring language there. But also, we're doing this for Jesus. People don't know who Jesus is in this city and beyond. And so there's Colossians, that this powerful scripture here. Check it out if you haven't. Um, really, within the actual translation, there's pronouns like he is and all that stuff. But we just put the name Jesus there. We were inspired by Louis Giglio, who did that at our church. And we we're like, let's just put the name of Jesus out there. Make it strong. Make it loud. Make it proud. And show that God's divinity in our lives is shown through our creativity together. And so that's really what it is. I love that. That's absolutely incredible. Dang, man. Let's, Let's just close in prayer. Yeah, Let's I go. know. I felt the same. No, we're no, done no. here, guys. Thank you, Pastor Oliver. I, I think he's saying something that, like, I, I know we're going to hear from everyone, but, like, a part of our process, because I think we're kind of talking about process, and I, I think it's a big thing to talk about creativity, is I feel like people, when it comes to creativity, they get real precious, like, real, like, cl- their yeah. ideas, like, they... I, what I love about our team is that, dude, we make so much stuff yeah. that you'll, you've never seen. Yeah. Like, we, we eliminate, we eliminate, we eliminate, yeah, yeah, yeah. we make, 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 make. It's like, literally, there's probably yeah. so many renditions of what this room looks like. And right. maybe you're like, bro, maybe you should have made a couple more renditions because it's not that great. I don't know what you're thinking, but just the process of getting there, I think that we try to pride ourselves in loving the process and not like, not being too in love with the idea, like loving the value that we have, being committed to the conviction, but going like, let's keep changing. And we've had so many problems with this space, even as we got into this space. These, even these decals that are up on the wall, it seems so simple, but like these things wouldn't take yesterday to the concrete. And so we had to like, on the fly, I just love our team. It's like, let's add sheetrock and keep the, uh, keep the aesthetic going and keep the storyline going. And I just think there's something really powerful about all of us. I think sometimes when creativity, we give up. So a lot of people, like, they go, oh, man, um, I'm not good enough, or it wasn't good enough, but that's really just an excuse for, for giving up. I think part of it's just, like, being committed to it and, and, and staying the course and staying in the process, and these guys do that so beautifully. I love that. And what Pastor is saying here, we were talking this morning, Manu and I, I was thinking about the room as a whole, but... There's so much power in having a positive attitude towards God opportunities. Being yellow. Like God, yeah, God uses that tremendously. And so we could have easily said like, oh, this is the umpteenth time of this or that won't work because we already discussed that. But keeping everything on the table, keeping everything accessible, saying anything goes is what helped us continue to nail down actual decisions to actually come together and make a decision together. And so that was the biggest thing. Yeah, it's it's partnership. Just yeah. everything that we get to do, even what we get to do with God, it's we get to partner Very, with God yeah. for his story. Since the beginning yes. of time, partnered with Adam. All right, name these animals. Take care of the garden. There, there's a partnership, and that's exactly what this space is about. It's a reminder to us, because some of us think that, okay, it's just my thing. This is precious to me. And then what happens is no one even gets to see some of it because it would have been a better version if we allowed other people to speak into it, if we allowed other people to speak into our lives or our creativity, just in any aspect, allowing other people into our story, being vulnerable with our art and with our creativity, it changes, it changes form and it shifts. And I I think that's exactly what happened in this space. And when I look around, I'm glad we chose yellow. It's my favorite color. 
So thank you guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> but Tiago, Jerry, maybe talk a little bit about the colors, the aesthetics, just the details in the room. We see all these different pieces here. Like what do, what does it all mean? And, it needs and, to be said about Tiago because we all worked really, really yes. hard. But the last 12 days, 14 days, this man has worked harder than anyone. He's been living in this space. He is the physical artist to everything that you see physical. He's the one who put hands to it. And we're very, very grateful. He's been a part of VU from Come the on. get-go. Love and now he goes to VU all the way from Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> but we love him. I want to make sure we shouted him out. Thank you. Uh, Are you going to miss sleeping here? or? Yeah. You know what's funny? I'm not going to lie. I was telling to uh, Nick Del Vento. When I walked from outside, like from the back, and just walking, and I was just sitting, like just looking, you know, the view here. It was like 12 days, two weeks. Miss my boys. But it's worth it. Every second of it. I think I'll do it again and again with a beautiful team, with the, the, the creatives in this place. We created to create. So I think when I, I was in the zone here and I, I didn't want to leave. I almost like I want to stay here longer and, and, and stay and, and work in every detail that could be perfect. Not for man's, but perfect to God. And I think when it was like, and you see through Virgil, process of creation was everything excellence everything was in minimal details and I think like that's what I want to accomplish here as a static or I want to be right in tune with the team because I think as like a team we we make bigger things better things and I think like creating you know and the funny part of this whole thing like when like God is talking about like Rich told me like hey you want to be part of a VU I was like the basil was like Sure. Do you have details? No. So we talk later. But I think that was the process. Every day was like, God was a divine experience. Yeah. That doesn't work. Okay, so let's find a solution. God, you, you come here and do this. Yeah. The wall outside. You know what I mean? Like you walk through outside and you see bleed it through like the, uh, uh, a loo installation. You know how making this, this, this pieces that you see here was every day a process and I, I think like God was working my life through this whole process. I need it. You know, and I think like the beauty of being here is just creating those pieces, every detail of it. Um, but also, I think the challenge as a creative, like I'm not a, being honest, like when we asking for renderings and things like that, it was basically like, can you send me a digital version of that? Digital version of that. And I keep saying, Kadi, I was like, Kadi, I do analog everything. So I can do miniature of this wall. I can do a miniature pieces. So basically that was my creation process. It was nothing computer, it was everything by hand. And then we made by hand everything here. So I think that's the process through the whole building this place. That's beautiful. Can we give it up for Tiago real quick? Because it takes sacrifice. It takes time. It takes hard work. And it's playing the long game. It's sticking in it and not giving up even when you feel tired and you miss your family and your family's in another state, but you're committed to this, not just to impress people, but for the glory of God. Amen. And all of this, when we look at it, it's for the glory of God. It's so that somebody will walk out of here not thinking that we are impressive in any way, but to know that the fact that we could even create something is because God has deposited it in our hearts. And that's the reason why this space exists, because there's a God who has allowed us to even operate in that way. And so the people would walk out being more impressed with God than they are with Vu Church or with this space. And so thank you for your sacrifice Welcome. and thank you for what you've Welcome. committed to this space. Thank you. It's beautiful. And by the way, real quick. That camera right there was a little weird to me. I'm not going to lie. Because I was like 360 and like Stephanie like, oh, stop checking your phone. Work. My wife. So it was like. That's hilarious. I was like working little pieces here and there. It was like Steph was like, hey, are you there? Are you? Did you eat? I was like, all right. Yes, yes, cloud, uh, yes, God, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So. so if you guys didn't know, we were streaming the entire thing oh, yeah. on YouTube, and there's a camera right there, a 360 view that you could see the entire process, 24 hours a day at all times. So I love that your wife was checking in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. You were good. <laughs> Make sure I'm, like, really working. Are you really in Miami? <laughs> I love that. Jerry, uh, you have contributed so much 
to this space and just as a, as our church as a whole I think you've all anything creative anything beautiful Jerry has looked at it and touched it and told us what to move and what to do uh, maybe just tell us a little bit about just even your contribution to this space and how that process was like for you yeah I also got a text hey Jerry we're gonna do um, Basel this year okay I'm like you in yes <laughs> that's all I replied um, but Honestly, I think it is such an um, such an important week in our city, you know, and I think it is so, so powerful that the church has a voice in this, like, you know, moment in this block in this week, you know, I think that there's a lot of art being made all around Miami, but not all of it is good art, not because it's good or bad. I'm saying it's not good art that glorifies God. And I think this space is a space that it's art that glorifies God. And it is beautiful. He is the creator of creation, of us, of the creative genius of all times is him. So I think for me, um, collaborating was so powerful. I think Pastor Rich and DC are such um, amazing leaders that love to bring people in. And I've loved that about them. I've learned that from them. I think um, I think as artists, as creatives, we like to, you know, our art is like for ourselves. It's a very intimate thing. You know, it's something that you probably process by yourself, but like you were saying last night, and then you kind of show... But this type of um, art and this type of week and this type of production and this whole entire space was a collaboration of different creatives. And I think that is just so beautiful because it's not just one, it's 10, it's hundreds of people yeah. behind the scenes that you probably would never know their names, you know, but because of them, we were able to put the space together. So for me, is that is like being able to have uh, a space, a creative space that is beautiful from the furniture we chose, from every installation, from the ladder, from, you know, the, the vinyl on the wall, the mirror with the vinyl. Everything has a meaning and everything was specific, um, just so you know, as we were designing the space. But I think what's so powerful it's those two things for me is, you know, having a voice in such an important week in our city um, and saying, hey, this is art that glorifies God. And yeah. two, being able to collaborate with so many artists, you know, and I just love that about our pastors because they're just visionaries and they just, you know, bring people together. And that's beautiful. I would agree. I think I always say this, like one of my favorite things about our church and about our community is the collaboration, is that we get to work so closely together and it helps us to get better and helps us to get sharper when we're like, okay, this person has this idea and I would never think of it that way, but now I can take it and run with it somewhere else. But I believe as a church, we're in a very unique space. There's not many people putting on art galleries in the middle of Basel and it's, it's something that we did, I think we did one time a few years ago and it was special just being in the heart of Wynwood um, and just seeing people walk through. Some people had no idea they were coming to church kids. They didn't know it was a church, but there's so many people's stories who are attached to even Basel years ago that said, I actually started coming to VU because I walked into a Basel. I thought I was coming to a party and I walked in and I heard a conversation and, and now I'm a part of this church and I helped build this church. And I think it's, it's really a beautiful thing for us to be venturing into this space, but it's not a space that a lot of people are called to be in or even feel the need to be in. And I just want to ask why as a church have we ventured into this space into art into crossing with culture investing our time investing our money like wh why does it matter to us as a church to be in this space it's a great question um you know I really believe that like God doesn't make you one way to use you another mm. and I think all of us have to rest in that a little bit I think a lot of times when I talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, it's like sometimes the thing that's in our hand is the thing that we devalue the most. Like wow. I, I look what's in Mon I want what's in Manu's hand. And it's like, now nah, God put something in your hand. And um, I think I'm still at 37 years of age learning what my gifts and strengths are. I'm still learning it for sure and defining that, but I'm not per se a, a technical artist. I don't know how to do Photoshop. I don't know how to physically put canvas up. But I do feel like God's given me an ability to bring people together and to somehow push them to get the beauty that's inside of them. And I feel just very called from God from a, a very young age to help make beautiful things. And I think it should be a part of the church's narrative. Like when you go back through the history, every beautiful piece of architecture, every beautiful painting and design was 
all being funded and resourced by the church. And then somehow we fell off and somehow that beautiful gift of creativity was given over, I think, to the dark side. And we're using some strong language there, but the church kind of backed out of the conversation. And I firmly believe that whatever you avoid, the devil invades. And so I just think we need to be in the conversation at least. And I think God made us this way. And so we're just trying to be who we are. I don't think that every church should be doing this. And, uh, but I feel like VU, from the day that we started, was always a place where it wasn't a church for everyone. I mean, everyone's welcome, but I don't think everyone's supposed to go to VU. I think it's a unique place for unique people. <laughs> and it's always been a tribe of creatives. Um, and that doesn't mean that you... Um, dress a certain way or have a certain haircut, it means that you recognize that God's put gifts inside of you to tell his story. I really think that's what we are. It's like we're storytellers of Jesus. And so this is the way that we tell our story here in Miami. And I think what Jerry was just saying is beautiful. Like this week, a hundred some thousand people invade Miami and they're all over. I mean, I've got too many friends in town right now. But what's cool is because our church decided to take this step, all of my friends who are stopping by every whatever Vogue's thing and Louis's thing. And they're also going to come stop by this space as well. And all of a sudden we would have missed that opportunity. Hey, come on Sunday. Well, they're not going to come on Sunday, but they're going to find some time today, tomorrow, next day to come in. What's the story? Well, here's the story, man. Like these ladders, we put these ladders because it was like our stairway to heaven. We had no idea that the man who invented and came up with the concept of this space would be in heaven, but God did. And we are watching before our eyes, not just a phrase of divine design, but we're watching before our eyes this prophetic statement that began in July come to pass, that Virgil right now is in heaven, and I can only imagine how he's making that space better, but I got a feeling that he is. But it's just these ladders, which meant something to me in July and August and September, but they mean something so much more to me now. It's, it's really, really beautiful. And I think that that story and that narrative, the church should be leading the charge with that. And so I think it's very important work. I think it's very valuable work. And I think it's really worthy work. And I think that, like you just said, I don't know if we'll, it'll be years to come that we'll hear the stories. And so for us, our church wants to try to, in, you see the sign, we can't do anything without it into the night. You know, like we want to take the light into the night. So that's why we're here. I think it's beautiful for us to know as a church what we're called to do in the city that we're in because we get to be in a unique city. Not all churches are in the middle of Miami in that, that even have access to Art Basel. And so I think it's just the awareness of where we are because some churches uh, are not in a space where it would make sense for them to do something like this. But I think having an understanding, even as we look at it as a church as a whole, but even as individuals, where are we and what has God called us to impact or where has he called us to impact? It's not going to look like this for everybody. It's not going to look like this for every single story, but getting the understanding of what has God divinely designed me to do. And that takes time. That takes hearing from God eliminating distractions because I think we all need to know individually what we need to be doing that God has called us to do but then collectively as a church having an understanding of okay these spaces may not have been invaded by people before but God's calling us to do it and so now we have to actually step in to this space and use what God has given us to uh, allow people to see things in a new light, to, to know that there's there's different expressions of the gospel. There's different ways for people to actually see the glory of God. It's in everything, but we get to see it through this. We get to see it in this. And so I'm just excited just even to hear the years to come of, of what's going to happen because people have walked into this space and maybe they'll, they'll get uh, the revelation of who God has called them to be because they walked in here. Maybe there's going to be some 17 year old kid who's going to get their calling and who's going to understand what they're meant to do because they walked into this space and it didn't happen on a Sunday service or it didn't happen in a conference, but it happened in a room of people saying, I'm going to express myself the way that God has called me to do and that we're free to do that as God has called us to. So we all have a question for you. What's your favorite uh, piece of merch? My favorite piece of merch. I have a few. It was really hard for me to rate them in order. Go. <laughs> The one I'm wearing right now. That's your favorite one? Right now. That one and then the black one with the... Uh, the one that I'm the wearing. Yellow, the, the, the one that you're wearing, oh, the one I'm wearing. Exactly. Yeah. That Greatness. makes sense. Great minds. <laughs> that shirt actually is a cool story. You should just... I think it's a funny story. Cool story. I don't know. Because like, all the chairs are yellow. But. So, um, 
the color yellow, yellow. And so we wanted to create accents in this space. And uh, we started doing tests with the chairs because um, a lot of, there were different iterations for seating. First, we thought of benches. We thought of rounded benches, yeah, curved benches. They were like maybe plastic chairs. And so we were just doing all these tests. And so we painted a chair, took a picture, got up to team, and then got up to Virgil. <laughs> and Virgil's like, put that on a shirt. It's like, for, that's cool. Let's do it. So literally that same photo was like a bad random photo. I sent it to the team. Can you Photoshop this sh this chair out and put it on the shirt? And so the team did it. And then it got back to uh, Virgil. And that was the last piece that we added to the collection. But really fun. And Your favorite one. Wow. Yeah. That's a special one. That's really cool. Well, I, I think what's cool, like, I, there's so many things that are going to be happening this week too. I think it's just, we're sitting here for a moment. Like, I think you're going to be tagging some of these walls, even maybe today. I want you to do it when people are in here. But there's a couple of phrases. Deconstruction's a big part, which this whole idea, there was a message I preached in our Peter collection uh, a year ago that Virgil really loved. It was called, please excuse the mess. And uh, so I think that phrase is going, I think we're doing that one. And then this other phrase that you see on stuff is busy isn't working from a, from a collection we did called Restless that Virgil and I would always talk a lot because Virgil worked so hard but we were really trying to zero in on like effective and fruitful work. And the phrase was like, busy isn't working. There's obviously this beautiful pun attached to it that just because you're busy doesn't mean you're actually doing anything of worth or value. And um, we were meant on Thursday night to do a midnight meditation, which was going to be really, really something I've wanted to do for a long time. But with the passing of Virgil, we've shifted that. So like Friday night, we're going to just hold a worship service in here. I don't know what the night's going to look like. We're just going to pray and worship. And... Um, in all of that, we're going to take a time just to, to meditate and to quiet our minds and obviously have a moment of silence for Virgil. But it's all under that banner of like, in all of this busyness and this hustle and this bustle, like you are under construction. Like you are God's divine design. Like he's working on you. Don't give up. Don't quit. And we want this place to be a, a space of hope for so many. And um, I'm hoping as you're just saying that people walk in and they get inspired and a seed is planted. That's what I think art is about. It's planting seeds and, and watering seed. And God, the great gardener, he'll, he'll, he'll bring it about. He'll... He'll bring the harvest. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. And just maybe some thoughts from you guys. Like, what are you, what's your hope uh, for people as they walk into this space? Like, what would you like people to walk away with as they step out of Vu Basil? Um, really, if they understand the vision. And what I want to do is honor Pastor Don Shree and Pastor Rich because as clearly as they're communicating, they're amazing. We love you guys so much. As clearly as they're communicating the vision now, it's been like that from the beginning. And so what they want to do is empower leaders. They want us to understand the vision and help communicate it clearly. And I think that was Virgil's heart too. Like I know a lot, a lot of creatives in here, you guys probably already seen all his stuff, but he has this website, Free Game, where it's like if you're trying to start your own brand, he just lays it out for you. And as creatives, sometimes we have a good idea or like a cool thing and we're like, this is mine. You know, like nobody gets this, you know, because it's cool. And if you have a cool idea, I'm not going to show you that I think it's cool. I'm just going to be like insecure about it. You know, it's so weird. Like, at least when I'm, I've grown. Um, <laughs> but how I was, you know, before, I'd be like, yeah, it's cool, but like, mm, I, I'm gonna think of something cooler, you know? Like, and it's like, why are we like this? Like, it's not okay. And so it's so counterculture what Virgil did, but our pastors are the same way. And so them coming together for this project is showing that vision that all of us have creativity inside of us. And it's not for us to keep. It's God doing a work through us for the world to give glory to him. And so when we're holding it to ourselves, we're actually doing ourselves a disservice. But more importantly, we're not being maximized in our output to God. And so oftentimes to be a blessing, you have to bless others. And so you have to do something. You have to give. You want to be of worth. You have to show your value. And God has put things inside of us where he's our value inside of us. All we got to do is show him. We don't got to show... We don't got to show this cool thing or that thing. We just got to be like, hey, Jesus is awesome, you know? And so from there, that's the outpour. That's the overflow. That's what makes the impact. And so the hope, the win, the purpose of this space is exactly that. It's showing God, Jesus to the world through creativity. So, For more sermons by Pastor Oliver Mariquin, <laughs> join us this Sunday at 9, 11, 1, 5, and 7 in South Miami. Beautiful. Anybody else? What's your hope? I want to hear from everyone. Yeah, I want to hear from all of us. 
Jerry didn't wear sneakers today, which was, un- she's got an unapproved uniform yeah, yeah, on, yeah, but yeah. it's fine. They're Chanel, not a big deal. Preachers and sneakers. Manu didn't wear sneakers either. So, <laughs> kidding, yeah, I'm, we're, okay. we're, I'm with Manu. Um, I think for me, it's just, fig- I think creativity, um, spaces like these, you know, art installations um, speak to different type of people, you know, maybe some creatives, maybe, um, you know, very introverted, you know, people that perhaps, um, won't even walk into a church service, you know, won't walk to Sunday, like Pastor Rich was saying, some of his friends won't come to Sunday, but they'll pass by here. And I think um, within these four walls, um, there's just a lot of a lot of messages that will speak to creatives, that will speak to this group of people um, that perhaps will never step into church. So yeah, my hope is that, my hope is that, um, a uh, 17 year old Jerry would walk in, um, maybe a broken person that's perhaps really into art and just doesn't know how to express herself, would walk into a space like this and be wrecked, you know, from the inside out, just from seeing, from hearing the story to seeing uh, a memorial to seeing, you know, a verse or just seeing, hey, I can do this one day, you know? So that's my, my hope and that it can be used as a tool to just reach a group of people that perhaps, you know, we can reach on a Sunday. Let's go, Jerry. Let's go. It's great. Um, For me, I think it's a lot of things, and I think I'm still processing all of it, but so far, I guess I would want people to feel strengthened and released. Um, There's so many things I've learned through this process. I think even doing this project in the collaboration with Virgil. So for me, like, I just want you all to know that collaboration is key. Like, I learned so much of how he even worked from a distance, just being part of this um, and his reach. He wasn't able to, I don't believe he's able to have the reach he did without collaboration. So just keep that in mind. I, as you guys are working creatives, like Ollie said, sometimes hey, we can be super insecure about what we're doing. We don't want to show it. It's very vulnerable, whatever. Um, or you want to take the credit because there are some pride elements into being creative. But at the end of the day, um, if you want to go a long distance, you got to take people with you. And you, sometimes you have moments where you need confidence. So like Jerry is like one of my best friends, but she brings a lot of confidence into the things that I'm doing. And so I love collaborating with her. And so defining those things in your journey, um, I think also just reminding yourselves of the power of art. I think art can be a bridge. And um, I think it, it attracts people. I think it breaks down barriers without you having to do much than other present the art. The art does the rest and the person interprets it and does what they need to do with it. But I was thinking yesterday as I was getting ready, um, Pastor Rich mentioned a little bit on it too, it's just how the church, um, like Michelangelo would paint the, the, the walls of the church. And if you go to Italy, those churches are beautiful. To this day, millions of people go back to that space because of the art that is in there. And so whatever impact that has in your life, it creates a bridge where you can go to and fro. Um, and so I think just those are some of the things I'm taking away. There's so much more, um, but I, my hope is as you guys walk around this space, just you were created for a purpose, on purpose. And so whether you're in the creative space or not, there's creativity in all of our DNA because we were created by a creator. <laughs> and so keep leading into that creativity, that innovation. It's making the world a better place. And so let's go. Hey. I think like they say everything that like, I feel the same. But like one thing that is stuck to my head every single time that I have opportunity, don't waste your time. Time is everything. Seize the moment right now. Create. Don't wait for somebody approval. You know, I think that was my journey as a creative. Like almost like so many no's, so many like, you know, you cannot do this. This is, this is not good enough. This Forget about that. Get the table out and say, I'm starting fresh. Don't waste your time. Create. This place should motivate you to go home, create a piece now. Create whatever you're in. Like whatever field you're in. A business plan. Whatever it is. Just don't waste time. Time is value. Like to the point that you're like, that's what I felt every day here. Uh, and it's just basically that. You know, I think everybody kind of say what, what I feel, but... 
time. I think don't waste your time. Create. That's it. It's beautiful. Come on. We talked about it. Life is like a mist. It's, it's here one day and gone tomorrow. But I think what's so interesting is that the things that we create, the things that we do, it, they outlive us. And they go on and they precede us. And the things that we deposit in the earth, even though one day we won't be here, they'll remain. And so whatever dream that God has placed on our hearts, the reason why he wants to get it out is because he knows that it's going to outlive us and it's going to benefit someone, that it, there's a legacy attached to it, that there's seeds that we plant today that people will eat from that we don't even know names of people that we don't know, people that we won't even encounter. And so whatever that thing is on the inside of you, our hope is that you would reach down and do the work to get it out. That you would do the necessary work that it takes to become all that God has created you to be. No matter how difficult that it may seem, it's like, let me partner with people. That's the one thing. It's like, we, we crave community, that we desire to be around people. And we can get community when we actually open up our lives to community. That if we stay isolated, we'll never fully reach the capacity that God has called us to. And so what I even learned from just hearing from you all and from this conversation is that we need connection. And we need community. And we hope that this space would be that, that we would walk out of here. Maybe you walked in here alone, meet somebody. Like, don't just walk in and out the gallery and, oh, that was really cool. I got my merch and I'm out, but have a conversation. This is a sp safe space where you can actually talk to somebody, get to who knows who you'll encounter in this room. And so you have an opportunity for this space to be community for you, for this space to be a safe haven where you can know that the things that are inside of you, that they're going to be people who are, are desiring to help pull that out and to help you become who God has called you to be. And so I think that's, this is what this space is. And I believe something's happening. It, it just, it just feels so divine. I know it's the, it's the theme, but it really does feel like God's hand is on this and that he's in all of it. And I think even through the role roadblocks, even through the, the grieving and all that's happening during this time, that God's hand is in it and we're just leaning into whatever he's doing. And, and it's a reminder to us that we're not in control, that we, we can design and we can plan and then things happen. But we have to be like, all right, I'm going to go with whatever God's doing, that I have to be okay with if he's moving in this direction, I'm going in this direction. If he's there, I'm there, that I'm not so attached to my thing. I'm not so attached to what I'm doing that I, I can't live loose enough for God to move. And so that's, I think that's our hope for this space, that we just let God do his thing. And we're here and we're like, all right, we'll do what, whatever it takes for people to see God in all of his glory. And as I think as we bring this conversation to a close, I I'm excited because we have so many different conversations that are happening uh, today. There's going to be some performances. I'm excited to hear from Doe and the writer's room. And you can go and, and check out the entire program. But we encourage you, tell somebody about this space. Uh, come whenever you can. Invite someone. I, I believe that it's going to be beneficial to people as we lean in and we just have conversations. And the conversation doesn't stop here, that we carry out the conversations uh, to the people around us. And so, uh, Pastor Richard, I'm just going to ask, maybe just pray for this, for this week and, and just a few days that we have together that people would find their divine assignment, that they would find that they were divinely designed and that just something would happen that we would never even think or imagine. Beautiful. Can you guys help me in thanking this wonderful panel and our very own Oprah, Charles. So this is the, this is this is really, really meaningful to me, and I think it's the perfect way to kick off. And thank you for taking your time. Couldn't even see these guys over here looking at the back of our head, but we're real people, and you're real people too. Um, like Manu said, so many things. At two o'clock today is a really beautiful session uh, on, on writing, songwriting, I think, primarily, but also just writing in general. Andy Mino, Aiden King's here, uh, my wife, uh, Luke Berry, uh, Doe, a lot of cool people. Tonight, uh, Ava Luna and Camilo. Camilo is, they're big parts of our church. Camilo just won four Latin Grammys last week. Uh, yeah, come on, we can give them a round of applause. There's a live performance by Doe at eight, and so just get here early, fill the space. Um, we do have merch. It's really special, like, Virgil's a part of all of it, and... Uh, yeah, it's really, really meaningful. Merch is merch, but I don't know. This one feels 
really special and significant. So I'm going to pray, and let's just pray for this whole week. Like, you guys are helping us kick this thing off. We had a beautiful dinner last night, but this is the first open kind of space, open gallery. Space is open all day long. Tell people, if they can't make it to a divine discussion, come in and see the space, take a photo somewhere, tell someone about it, and um, meet somebody new. Lord, we thank you so much for uh, just what you're doing. Lord, we thank you for everyone that's in the room today. Lord, we thank you for everyone who's watching online or who's going to watch this content later on Instagram or YouTube or TikTok, wherever they're seeing this today. Lord, we just pray from the very beginning, Lord, of this week, that, Lord, your hand would be upon it. God, we know that since July, Lord, you are the divine designer. You are the one who is the architect behind all of this. So, Lord, now we rest and we surrender and we give ourselves over to you. Lord, we are clay in your hands, Lord. We are the paint on your paintbrush. Use us this week, God. We want to give you glory. This is not about Vu. This is not about a man's name. This is about the one true name, the invisible God who has a name. His name is Jesus. So Lord, we pray that this space Lord, would be dedicated over to you, that all week long, Lord, people would stumble into this space on purpose or on accident, uh, by design or by default. Lord, somehow they would walk in here but as they walk in, Lord, your presence would meet them, Lord. May it be more than just art. May it truly have divinity in it, God. May people ask questions. May people get curious this week, Lord. May seeds be planted, Lord. May they be watered. And God, bring about a harvest. Lord, we love our city of Miami. God, we're thankful for the mission field that's in front of us. Lord, not to change the city, but to serve the city, to love the city, to bless the city. God, we believe that you'll change it. We believe that you'll transform it. You'll deliver it. We're just going to be here at our post going into the night serving. So bless this week, God. Lord, may this be a great celebration. Thank you for our friend Virgil. Thank you for what he meant to so many of us. Some of us never had the chance to meet him personally, Lord, but God, he still impacted our lives. Thank you for the four 41 years that we have with him. And thank you, God, that he was a part of this space. Lord, I pray that every day it would be a tribute and it would honor the life that he lived, God. We bless his family. We think about them today as they're grieving, as they're mourning. God, may they be in our hearts all week long. We honor you. We praise you. And in Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, amen. God bless you guys. Amen.